Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now inside this box is the cheapest full PC setup that I could find on eBay. For just £49.99 we've got a monitor, the PC itself, a keyboard, a mouse and all of the necessary cables. Now you may think that this was just a one-off lucky purchase but if you take a look on eBay, especially here in the UK, you'll see quite a lot of these listings for full setups that cost anywhere between 50 and 60 pounds. Now what these machines have in common is that they are often Dell or HP secondhand machines that come with a 17 inch monitor and a lot of the time the specs will vary depending on what they have in stock at the time. Now if you're looking for a cheap system then this may be the way to go because for 50 pounds for a full setup with Windows 10 well you can't really go wrong. Today I wanted to see what we actually got after purchasing one of these and all I know for sure is that it should feature 4 gigs of RAM, a 250 gig hard drive and Wi-Fi which again for the price seems very reasonable indeed. So I suppose we better get this box open, see exactly what we've got and uh, talk about how well a machine like this will actually perform and maybe we'll add a graphics card to it as well unless it's already got one and see what it can do when it comes to running games. Something that shouldn't be at the forefront of your mind if ordering one of these setups. So let's see what we got for our £49 and 99 pence. Starting with the accessories and we have the HP mouse and chunky Dell keyboard, the key noises of which remind me of every 90s movie office scene. I can picture a workplace full of these and the noise is just glorious. As promised, we also have the necessary cables required to make use of this machine straight out of the box. No speakers, but we weren't promised any, so it doesn't matter. This very adjustable monitor looks to be a commonly found 17 inch 1280 by 1024 display. I'll confirm that later. And as far as monitors go, it's nothing special, but it's ideal for a setup like this. The vertical adjustment is a bit haphazard. I nearly took my two front teeth out when standing above it. It feels like it's spring loaded. As for the machine, well, it appears to be a no frills, small form factor Dell, an Optiplex 755 to be precise, from around 2008. Every time you see it from now on, the side panel will be off, as it would be more likely for me to bump into the Queen having dinner in Nando's than it would for me to be able to refit this. I don't know what I did, but the side panel will just not go back on. Inside, everything looks pretty tidy and dust free, which is good because I would assume that most people purchasing one of these wouldn't feel that confident opening it up and tinkering around inside just to remove a few bits of dust and grime. I almost forgot, we did get a free Wi-Fi adapter too this little USB dongle, which is fine at maintaining a stable connection. Though of course you do have the traditional Ethernet port to make use of for a wired connection. So of course I just had to test it out with the included monitor and it was nice to see that everything had been set up and open office had been installed, as well as some other free software that would likely be appreciated by someone looking to get on with some work straight away. Jumping into Device Manager for a quick look at the specifications and we have a Core 2 Duo E4600 clocked at 2.4 GHz along with onboard Q35 graphics. Uh oh. I can confirm this machine does have 4 gigs of RAM as promised and a 250 gig hard drive. Oh, and the monitor does support 1280 by 1024 Max at 75 Hz. Now I was concerned at first about how Windows 10 would run on a machine of this age but I was quite surprised at how not snappy but non-laggy everything was. This is in part thanks to the sensible amount of RAM. 2 gigs may still be okay but I'd recommend avoiding any cheap pre-built with that amount these days. 4 on the other hand is perfect for basic computing and there are two free slots on the motherboard should we ever want to add some more. Sound wise the traditional Dell hum is present but the system remains quiet enough as to not bother you if it were under a desk. For basic usage then and despite a chip from late 2007 powering this rig everything was okay. 
I then attempted to run some games, and anyone who has experienced older onboard graphics like the Q35 Express chipset will know that instant pain and regret awaits. Vice City lagged along at about 15 frames per second at 640x480 of course, though remember this PC is not meant for gaming. This whole gaming part is just for the sake of the channel name not going unused for the next five or so minutes. Now Half-Life 2 was a thing of beauty. It ran a little better, but boy were the graphics messed up. It actually got to the point where I forgot I was recording and continued playing for a good half an hour just to see what would happen to the game world. Laughing uncontrollably all the way through the tests. <laughs> <laughs> now although this machine does have a 275 watt or so PSU, the case is very cramped and we did get the small form factor version of the PC. Remember we were told that it could be a small form factor system or a desktop that we got. And for adding a graphics card, a full tower desktop would be the better choice. Now the PCI Express slot states 25 watts maximum as well, so a more powerful graphics card was out of the question, but after making a subtle change in the form of a GeForce 210, I know, I know, and realizing I had been using the machine upside down all day, I installed the drivers and found the experience to be a little better yet again. So picking up a used one of these to go with this Dell might be a good idea, though as I said before, if you're after a system like this, you probably won't be concerned with upgrade options. This certainly improved the gaming experience though, with the previously tested GTA and Half-Life 2 now running a lot better. I was even able to throw Fallout 3 at this PC and see at least 30 frames per second at the maximum supported resolution. Games like Counter-Strike Global Offensive will panic though and cause you some trouble even with everything turned down. There might be some mods out there to help you with that if you want to go down that road. Remember, the GeForce 210 also doesn't support any latest DirectX versions, so you're pretty much stuck with older games. And while we're on the subject, we may as well take a quick look at another Bethesda classic, The Elder Scrolls Oblivion, which seemed to run fine again and a little better than Fallout 3, even in built-up areas. So for games like that, this combination's going to be okay. I can never help it, I always find myself coming back to gaming and seeing how various systems handle themselves, despite this not really being about gameplay this time around. For a basic machine, an old Dell always seems like a sensible path to go down, simply because they are cheap and go on forever. Forever, in the world of PCs, is any term that exceeds 10 years. There is sort of an upgrade path as well, and I found I could use an SSD with it no problem. So if it does start to get a little tired, slap one of these in, and as well as a little bit more RAM and possibly even a Core 2 Quad processor, you might just be able to make it last forever ever, instead of just forever. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this mystery PC spec unboxing. I have always been curious as to what would actually turn up if I bought the cheapest full setup online. And you know, I'm not really that disappointed for anyone in an office environment or someone who's just put an office in their house, they want something cheap. Though if you've just put an office in your house, you probably can afford something a little better than this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all in all, it's not too bad for what it is. Personally, I think this PC was worth it just for this Half-Life 2 gameplay. I've never seen anything quite like this before. I'm not sure what could have caused this issue, to be honest. It was, it's very likely that it's the Q35 chipset drivers. I'm not sure if this would happen with a different operating system or whether it's just... Um, it, it just doesn't like Windows 10, so that could be something to bear in mind, though. As I've mentioned many times now, it's not a machine that you would or should really pick up for gaming purposes, though. As you saw, even when paired with a GeForce 210, it can handle itself in some lower-end situations, and maybe by making use of a few mods, you might be able to tweak things a little further. This whole Half-Life 2 issue might, might be resolvable. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the look at what is one of the cheapest uh, bundles on eBay. If you did, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. 
subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one where I'm not quite sure what we'll be doing yet but as always we'll think of something. Thank you and good night.